Okay, boys and girls, let's turn to page 158 so we could discuss the upside down boy. 158. Let me get there as well. So before we even start, we have to talk about the genre of our story. And when we talk about genre, what are we talking about? What do we mean by genre? That's a funny word, but what does it mean? What does it mean? Kelsey, what does a genre mean? The type of story the book is. The type of story the book is. And this is a type that we haven't read yet, and it is a memoir. Now, a memoir is a text about the personal experiences and memories of its author. You could write a memoir, because it would be about the memories, your personal memories and experiences. And a memoir may focus on one part of his or her life. So this story just focuses on one part of the author's life. Now, memoirs include events that happened in the past that are usually presented in chronological order. What do you think that means, chronological order? What does that mean, chronological order? Logan? Like first, then last. Yes, in the order that they happen, first, next, last. So it's in the order that they happen. Very, very good. And the events in the events in a nonfiction memoir include real people and their feelings about those events. So it is nonfiction. Nonfiction, of course, means that it really happened. This is not made up. It is nonfiction. Nonfiction, boys and girls. And then authors of memoirs use descriptive language and sensory words to share their experience. This author in particular used a lot, a lot of descriptive language and sensory words to share his experiences. So this is Juan Felipe Herrera. And he used a lot of sensory words and a lot of imagery in his story. Yes, you have a question? Do you think the author is a girl? No, it's a boy, Juan Felipe Herrera. But there's a picture at the bottom. Okay. But it is a, the illustrator is Elizabeth Gomez. That's the illustrator. But the author is a man. Yes. So what am I supposed to be in the Oh, really? Um, well, that's the illustrator. I don't know, maybe. I think that's kind of a common name, last name. Okay. So we have to remember that this is a memoir. They include events that happen in the past that are usually presented in chronological order. The events are nonfiction. They're nonfiction, right, boys and girls? And they include real people and their feelings about those events, and they use descriptive language and sensory words to share their experiences. They're so interesting. So, so let's start. So now the author is a boy, because remember he's a boy, he's the upside down boy. Definitely a boy. Juanito is a boy. And this story has very beautiful illustrations. So I am going to make this a one page so we can see. And we're going to listen and we're going to discuss. When I was little, my family spent years working in the field as campesinos. One day, my mama said to my papi, let's settle down. It's time that Juanito goes to school. That year, we were living in the mountains by Lake Wolfer, a glassy world full of sky colors. Poppy's old army truck brought us down the steep mountain roads all the way to Mrs. Anta Sola's pink house on Hoodinger Street. 
I was eight years old and about to live in a big city for the first time. Juan Felipe Herrera. Okay, now. Steep. If a hill or a mountain is steep, it is difficult to climb because it goes almost straight up. So, let me ask you this. It says that Juanito and his family were compa... It is the word campesinos. What do you think that is? What do you think a campesino is? We have some clues. It says campesinos. What do you think that is? What could that be? Yanni? Maybe farmers? Farmers. What do you think? Farmers in Spanish. Farmers. They're probably farmers because they work in fields. That would be my guess, yes? And all these movies kind of tell that they're farmers in the picture because there's all the fields and like tractors. Very good, very good. We use the clues, right? We use the clues. We use our context clues because we see that they are working in the fields. We see the pictures, we see a tractor, we see animals, very good. Good job, boys and girls. They are farmers, it must mean farmers. And then, let's keep reading. Oh, I wanna ask you another thing. What does he do for the first time when he is eight years old? For the first time ever when he is eight years old? which is around your age, eight years old. Libby, what does he do? What does it say he does? It's on this page, Libby. It is on page 160, it says, for the first time when he was eight. It says right here in the last okay. sentence. Yes, when he's eight years old, he's going to live in the city for the very first time. It's going to be, a, do you think that's going to be a big change? Do we find out that that's a big change for him? Yeah. Yes, big change. Mama, who loves words, sings out the name on the street sign, Huniper. Huniper, Huniper. Poppy parks our old army truck on Huniper Street in front of Mrs. Andasola's tiny pink house. We found it at last, Poppy shouts. Huniper. Time to start school, Mama tells me with music in her voice. My Huniper Street, I yell to the chickens in the yard. Don't worry, Chico, Poppy says as he walks me to school. Everything changes. A new place has new leaves on the trees and blows fresh air into your body. I pinch my ear. Am I really here? Maybe the street lamp is really a golden cornstalk with a dusty gray coat. People speed by alone in their fancy melting cars. In the valleys, campesinos sang, Buenos dias, Juanito. I make a clown face, half funny, half scared. I don't speak English, I say to Papi. Will my tongue turn into a rock? Speed. If you speed, you move too fast. Okay, so we have some of our figurative language in there where he asks, will my tongue turn into a rock? And the street lamp is really a golden corn stalk. So, fancy melting cars. We've discussed what those mean, but that's some of the imagery that we, <coughs> excuse me, that we have in our, in our beautiful story. I slow step into school. 
My burrito de papas. My potato burrito in a brown bag. Empty playground. Fences locked. One cloud up high. No one in the halls. Open a door with a blue number 27. Donde estoy? Where am I? My question in Spanish fades as the thick door slams behind me. Mrs. Sampson, the teacher, shows me my desk. Kids laugh when I poke my nose into my lunch bag. The hard round clock above my head clicks and aims its strange arrows at me. So tell me, what does he bring for lunch? What does he bring for lunch? I love a potato burrito. A potato burrito. What do you bring for lunch? Um, a sandwich. A sandwich. Yanni, what do you bring for lunch? Um, probably some sandwich. sandwich. What do you bring, Juliana? Pasta. Pasta. Alisa, what do you bring for lunch? Clark, what do you bring? A sandwich. Jensen? Nobody here, anybody here bring a burrito for lunch? No. Avery? I have, like, noodles. Do you have noodles? Yeah, cold noodles. Cold, cold noodles? Yeah. yeah. Noodles. Okay, let's keep reading. Why do you think he brings a burrito? Why does he bring a potato burrito? Teddy? And that's what, that's one of the foods he loves, right? That's part of his culture. Oh, look, what is he doing here? What's he doing in this picture? What is he doing, Juliana? Dreaming. Is he dreaming? What is he doing in that picture? Ivy? Drawing. He's drawing. Alisa? He's finger painting. He's finger painting. What is he finger painting? What are some of the things he's finger painting? Kelsey? A sign. A sign. A sign. Did you say a sign or a sign? A sign. A sign. Logan? Crazy tomato cars and cucumber sombreros. Yeah, crazy cucumber cars. Cucumber sombreros. Where's the cucumber sombreros? Were they on the other page? No, they're on this page. They're on this page? I'm not seeing them, but they could be there. Well, that's what it says next to it. Oh, that's what it says next to it? Okay, I don't see them, but they're there. But he's got those crazy cars. So many cool things he's got there. Let's keep reading. On the chalkboard, I see a row of alphabet letters and addition numbers. If I learn them, will they grow like seeds? If I learn the English words, will my voice reach the ceiling, weave through it like grapevines? We are finger painting. I make wild suns with my open hands. Crazy tomato cars and cucumber sombreros. I write my name with seven chilies. What is that? Mrs. Sampson asks. My tongue is a rock. The school bell rings and shakes me. I run and grab my lunch bag and sit on the green steel bench. In a few fast minutes, I finish my potato burrito. But everyone plays, and I am alone. It is only recess, my classmate Amanda says in Spanish. In Spanish, I pronounce recess slowly. Sounds like recess, like the word for cattle, huh? I say. What is recess? I ask Amanda. You think you could you could finger paint some some of these cool things with your fingers? No, 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 no,
is, I think that he is very artistic in the things that he's making. And they really reflect his culture and the things he eats and the things he thinks about. Yes. Oh, the, the illustrator drew it. Okay. Yes? This, this call sign looks like a bean you could sideways. It kind of looks like a bean. It kind of does, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's so cool. I love the illustrations in this story. They're so good. The high bell roars again. Yes. This time, everyone eats their sandwiches while I play in the breezy baseball diamond by myself. Is this recess? I ask again. When I jump up, everyone sits. When I sit, all the kids swing through the air. My feet float through the clouds when all I want is to touch the earth. I am the upside down boy. Breezy. When it is breezy outside, you can feel the wind softly blowing. Now, is, is Juanito really floating through the sky? Is he really floating, Ethan? Does he like that feeling like he's floating, or would he rather really be firmly planted on the ground? What do you think? Probably like he's um, he's sad because because he doesn't speak English. He doesn't speak English, and um, and uh, he, he he's sad. He doesn't speak English. He doesn't like feel. He doesn't feel like he's a part of the group. Yeah, he's sad, right? He doesn't feel like he's part of the group. So he doesn't really like that feeling that he's apart from everybody. So he would rather be more firmly planted on the ground. You are so right. So right. So yes, that's true. He is not really floating above everyone, kind of like one of those parade balloons. You know those parade balloons that float in the air? He's not one of those. And there he is, up with a big bird. Poppy comes home to Mrs. Andasola's pink house. I show him my finger painting. What a spicy sun, he sings out. It reminds me of hot summer days in the San Joaquin Valley, he says, brushing his dark hair with his hands. Look, Mama, see my painting? Those are flying tomatoes ready for salsa, Mama sings. She shows my painting to Mrs. Andasola, who shows it to Gabino, her canary. Gabino, Gabino, see? Mrs. Andasola yells. What do you think? Gabino nods his head back and forth. Peel, peel, pee! Mrs. Sampson invites me to the front of the class. Sing, Juanito. Sing a song we have been practicing. I pop up shaking. I am alone facing the class. Ready to sing? Mrs. Sampson asks me. I am frozen. Then a deep breath fills me. Three blind mice, three blind mice, I sing. My eyes open as big as the ceiling, and my hands spread out as if catching raindrops from the sky. You have a very beautiful voice, Juanito, Mrs. Sampson says. What is beautiful? I ask Amanda after school. Oh, so what song is he singing? What song does he sing? Alisa? Three blind mice. Yes, Avery? There's three blind mice on the side. Yes, right in the illustrations. So I think it shows us how important it is to look at the illustrations in the stories because they have some surprising things in there sometimes. They're an important part of the story. Right, Libby? Thank you for pointing that out. Yes. And also on page 168, the canary is the shed. It what? I think the canary is the shed. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. I think so, too. It looks like a little baby chick that just passed. Oh, yeah, it does look like a chick, doesn't it? You are right on that. It does look a lot like a check. It does not look like a regular canary. At home, I help Mama and Mrs. Andasola make buñuelos, fried sweet cinnamon tortilla chips. 
Pichu, come here, I sing out, calling my dog as I stretch a dough ball. Listen to me, I sing to Pichu with his ears curled up into fuzzy triangles. My voice is beautiful. What is he singing? Mrs. Andasola asks my mom as she gently lays a bunuelo into the frying pan. My teacher says my voice is beautiful, I sing, dancing with a tiny dough ball stuck on my nose. See, sí, see, sí, Mama laughs. Let's see if your bunuelos come out beautiful too. I only made it to the third grade, Juanito, Mama tells me as I get ready for bed. When we lived in El Paso, Texas, my mother needed help at home. We were very poor, and she was tired from cleaning people's houses. That year, your mama won a spelling medal, Poppy says as he shaves in the bathroom. Your poppy learned English without a school, Mama says. When he worked the railroads, he would pay his buddies a penny for each word they taught him. Poppy says softly, each word, each language has its own magic. So, how far did Juanito's mother make it in school? Clark? Third grade. Third grade. And why didn't his mother finish school? Why didn't she finish school? Ethan? Because they were really poor. They were poor, and why else? Olive? Her mom needed help. Yeah, his mom needed help. They were poor. His mom, mom had to work to clean houses, and she needed help. His mom needed help. Needed help and help. After a week of reading a new poem aloud to us every day, Mrs. Sampson says, write a poem, as she plays symphony music on the old red phonograph. I think of Mama. Squeeze my pencil. Pour letters from the shiny tip like a skinny river. The waves tumble onto the page. L's curl at the bottom. F's tip their hats from their heads. M's are sea waves. They crash over my table. Juanito's poem. Papi Felipe with a mustache of words. Mama Lucha with strawberries in her hair. I see magic salsa in my house and everywhere. I got an A on my poem, I yell to everyone in the front yard where Mama gives Papi a haircut. I show Gabino my paper as I fly through the kitchen to the backyard. Listen, I sing to the baby chicks with my hands up as if I am a famous music conductor. I sprinkle corn kernels and sing out my poem. Each fuzzy chick gets a name. Beethoven, you are the one with the bushy head. Mozart, you jumpy black spotted hen. Johann Sebastian, tiny red rooster, dance, dance. Conductor. A conductor directs a group of people who sing or play musical instruments. So how can you tell that Juanito is proud of the grade he received on his poem? How can we tell that he's proud? Ivy? Um, because he's like dancing. And for like the names of the chickens, those are all famous music composers. And like composers, yes. They're all famous composers. And Beethoven, we're learning about Beethoven and music. Awesome. That's awesome. So why, how else can we tell that Juanito is proud of the grade he received on his poem? What did he do? Yes? He starts singing. He starts singing, yes. Libby? What does he do? Dances. Olive. Um, because getting an A is a good thing, and also he's like, I got an A on my phone. He's in a phone. Yeah, he has an A. Yes, he, he tells everyone.
with an exclamation point, Kelsey? Like he says it to everyone and he tells everyone, yes? Yes, Avery? Yes, he tells them. He sings out his poem. Yes, Teddy? Um, he looks happy about it. He looks happy about it. Elisa? Mm -hmm. So he gives every chicken a name. So he tells everybody. He yells it to everyone in the front yard. So he tells everybody in the front yard all about his poem. He tells everybody. So very good. He's super proud of the whole situation. In the morning, as we walk to school, Poppy turns and says, You do have a nice voice, Juanito. I never heard you sing until yesterday when you fed the chickens. At first, when we moved here, you looked sad and I didn't know what to do. I felt funny. Upside down, I say to him. The city streets aren't soft with flowers. Buildings don't have faces. You know, Poppy, in the campo, I knew all the names, even of those bugs with little wild eyes and shiny noses. Here, he says, here's my harmonica. It has many voices, many beautiful songs, just like you. Sing them. On open house day, Mama and Poppy sit in the front row. Mrs. Andasola admires our drawings on the walls, Gavino on her shoulder. Our paintings look like the flowery fields back in the valley, I tell Amanda. I have a surprise, I whisper to Mama. I am El Maestro Juanito, the choir conductor. Mrs. Sampson smiles, wearing a chilly sombrero, and puts on the music. I blow a C with my harmonica. La 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 la! Ready to sing out your poems? I ask my choir. Uno, dos, and three. So what does Juanito get to do at the open house? Juliana? Be a conductor. He gets to be a conductor. Very good. So let me ask you this. What do you think the author means when he worried about his tongue turning into a rock? What does that mean? When he's worried, remember he said he was worried about his tongue turning into a rock? What did that mean? Yanni? That he couldn't speak English at all, not even one word. He couldn't speak English, that's right. Um, is that what you were going to say? Olive, what do you think? Um, he thinks that he's not going to be able to speak to many people. He's not going to be able to speak to many people. Avery? When he tries to talk, it's like he Okay. What do you think, Juliana? He can't talk. Well, he can talk. I mean, he can talk. But he can't talk English. He talks Spanish. He can't speak Spanish. Okay. And how did his father learn English? How did his father learn English? Mikey? Um, when he worked at the railroad, he would pay his buddy a he would, he would pay his buddies a penny for every word. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? It's super interesting. Very cool. His father really wanted to learn English words, right? Some people are so desperate to learn that they'll do so many things to learn. Teddy? Okay, boys and girls, here's what we're going to do. You are going to close up your books, and you could just put it on the floor for now. And then we're going to be ready to take our test. It should not take you very long. We're pretty prepped for it. We prepared so well.